welcome to our review on DNA. So as we've already seen in our earlier video, when we're talking about eukaryotic cells, then all of that genetic material is found inside the nucleus. So what we actually have inside the nucleus of eukaryotic cells is this stuff called DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, it's not just some random assortment. It's actually been organized into structures called chromosomes. And what we find is that if we then zoom into the actual chromosome, each little section of DNA on that chromosome is referred to as a gene. And every gene will code for a protein. So what we have inside our cell then, the nucleus, inside the nucleus is the DNA. The DNA is arranged into chromosomes and the chromosomes can be divided into genes with each gene coding for a protein. So one thing we do need to remember is that everyone has unique DNA. There is one exception to this, which is if you happen to be an identical twin, then you have identical DNA to each other. But that does mean that we have this brilliant application of our DNA in the fact that we can use it to identify particular suspects at a crime scene because everyone's DNA has a unique pattern. If you remember what we said previously, then every bit of DNA can be divided up into shorter sections called a gene. Now, genes are actually just sections of DNA that code for a certain characteristic. So you have a gene for eye color, you've got genes for hair color, you've got genes for your skin color. But the reason that they code for this is because they actually code for a protein. Now, what we actually find is that in every single cell in your body, then you've got a complete set of DNA. But not every gene is actually active in all cells. Otherwise, every single cell in your body would make every single protein and that would just be crazy. So what we actually find is that if you were thinking about a red blood cell, for example, then only the genes that are required in a red blood cell are actually what's called switched on. All of the others are switched off. So you only make the proteins needed in a red blood cell. If we look at a white blood cell, then only the white blood cell proteins would actually be needed. Therefore, only the white blood cell genes would be switched on. All of the others are switched off. So that's how we get all these different cell types is through having different genes switched on or off in those different areas of our body. The next thing we need to know is the actual structure of DNA. And they always used to love this on the previous specification. So DNA is what's called a polymer. And that means it's made up of lots of smaller units called monomers. The DNA itself is made up of two strands which are bonded together to form something called a double helix. And that's what you can see on the right hand side there. When we're thinking about the actual monomers that make up this polymer, they are something called a nucleotide. Now, the nucleotide is in the bottom right there that you can see, which has got three components to it. It's got a sugar, which is called deoxyribose. It has a phosphate group attached and it's got a new, an actual base there. So what we actually find is that would either be adenine, thymine, cytosine or guanine. So A, T, C or G. And it's those nucleotides that then all join together to make up the double helix structure of DNA. So the way in which those nucleotides actually join together is by making a sugar phosphate backbone. So basically the sugar will join onto a phosphate, which joins onto a sugar, which joins onto a phosphate all the way up. And then in the middle of our strands, we then have those bases. Now they don't just join up any old which way, they have what's called complementary base pairing. So what we mean by that is the fact that the same two bases will always pair up in the center of the actual strands there. So what we find is that in terms of complementary base pairing, a always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. So the easy way to remember that is the pointy letters A and T and the curly letters C and G go together. So do remember this because they always used to have these questions about describe the structure of DNA. So if you were talking about the fact there was complementary base pairing and you gave the examples, you were looking at two marks for that alone. If you obviously talked about the double helix structure, there's another mark potentially. So do make sure you remember the complementary base pairs, A and T, C and G, and the fact that we have this double helix structure. 